Yeah, my name is Tom, and uh, I work with an uh, organization called Overland Missions. Um, and my, my wife, Becca, is over here. Um, although in Africa they call her Mrs. Pastor Tom. <laughs> so you can call her that, or Becca, she answers to both. And, um, but yeah, so we, we're, we're badges. We, we really grew up in, in our faith here. In fact, uh, 10 years ago, I was just starting on the, the prime time. Now it's called Badger Crew. You know, I get the n names right. Um, just starting on the band here, you know, and, and I was a believer for about six months at that time. Um, I, I was raised atheist, um, and so just before high school, someone had uh, the the desire to share with me, and I, I rejected a lot of that. Uh, it took a long time, but um, eventually uh, the gospel worked with me and, and, and kind of changed my life. Um, and, I, and I came here and I remember some of my early Bible studies. I was in Witty, back when Witty was a cool dorm. <laughs> and there were there much worse dorms. So those of you that are there, trust me, it could have been worse. Um, so I was there and I remember being in these Bible studies for the first time and I'd be like, guys, check this out. Jesus walked on water. <laughs> you know, I'd be like, yeah. Bible study. Oh, you, you knew that. I don't, remember, don't worry about it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they'd be asking questions in Bible study. And maybe, you know how you guys have those intro questions? It's like, okay, so which disciple did this? And I'm like, there were disciples? Like, you know, and then people would, you know, I say, anyways, so things have changed since then. And I actually remember having those uh, studies. Um, do we have pictures? Is it, is it running? Awesome. So here is actually an early, early picture. Oh, this thing's kind of fidgety. My. Awkwardly sized ears aren't handling it very well. Um, this is one of the early pictures. This is a Badger game. I actually credit uh, possibly my marriage to being a Badger because everybody looks good wearing a Badger shirt. And I kind of, you know, made it, made it function and managed to get her. She rejected me a lot, so guys, you know, be respectful, but pursue. You know? and, uh, it might take a while. But I won't know. And that's good, but. <laughs> So, um, so that was my time on campus. I did a lot of stupid things. You go to the next one. This is one of my favorite little pictures. My apartment at the time was a bunch of crew guys, and we had all kinds of stupid things we would do. This we turned our staircase into a twisting slide using mattresses, and we also I don't know if I'm so old, but we made a we called it a Ninja Warrior course. It's this weird TV show where people have to climb around stuff. We actually made one in our apartment. It's three floors. And so we did this crazy thing, people got to sign our wall if you got to do that. So that was my experience. Um, and that was my experience. You can go to the next slide. So this is us now. This is my wife and I back at. Um, this is in Angola. This is where we're moving. Uh, the reason we're actually in the States right now is we are transitioning from Zambia into Angola. We're trying to get our visas. And uh, Angola is a tricky, tricky place. So we're back, which is an awesome opportunity to meet people. Uh, to speak at things like this, which is awesome. Um, you go to the next picture. Um, so this is the Mupa Val. Um, this is the, the people group that we're going to be focusing on to begin with. And so let me talk about Overland for a second. Overland Missions is who we work with. We are uh, an apostolic mission organization, meaning we don't, we don't plant in one place uh, like a pastor of a church. We don't plant churches. We move from, from place to place and try to bring up local leadership, try to bring up local believers, um, and we focus on indigenous, uh, traditional leadership areas, so tribal regions, that have no ministry happening. Um, so the Mukubau people are one of five people groups in Southwest Angola that my wife and I and our small team of two other families are, are pursuing. Um, and of, of them, of these, these people groups, of these five, I think I've heard of um, the, the Joshua Project. It's, a, it's, a, it's the world's largest uh, ethnic group database in the world. Of the five people groups we're moving towards, one of them even shows up on that project. Um, the other four aren't there. We're going to be the only known Christians uh, among them or near them. Um, and so we just have high hopes for that. We're believing for huge things. Uh, the people are amazing. Uh, some of the greatest people I've ever met in my life. It's a hard, hard life. This is a great picture of, of Becca. Uh, chilling with the ladies, uh, loving it. Um, Till the next picture, and, and yeah, so this is some of the stuff that we have to do. Um, 
I am not a mechanic. Actually, I, my degree here was, was genetics. I focused in medical genetics and genetic engineering when I graduated. Um, after that, I stinted in East Asia, and I went to work at Overland for a while, um, and then came back, and my wife and I worked in Madison. I worked in pharmaceutical development. She worked in teaching. She's a teacher. Um, and, and after that, we, we moved to join Overland Missions, kind of left, left what we had going on here for, for this. And I have no idea why in the world it would be me. Uh, I, I, I can't do anything practical. I can't fix anything. I, can't, I can barely make a fire. And I actually sat down, so the guy that's with me, I'm under the car. And Phil is the guy, he's the, the founder of Overland. I got to spend the year with him uh, doing ministry. And at one point, I was breaking down. I'm like, Phil, this is ridiculous. I don't know why you want me. I don't know why you would ever even think of having me in an organization. I can't fix cars. I can't weld things. I can't build stuff. I can't do anything. The only thing I even know how to do is dialogue the gospel. He was like, dude, that's the one thing we need. Like, everything else will come. You'll figure it out. And so this, is, this road is one of the worst roads I've ever seen in my life. Uh, we blew out five shocks, five shock absorbers, driving back and forth on this. It's a 60-mile it's a road. It took us five hours one way. Um, miserable, so I'm changing that out. That's something I never thought of. Uh, next picture. This is our home. I miss it immensely. Uh, this is our tent. Um, we, we, we moved into this, and it's surprising you get used to. Something that I, I hate, absolutely hate, is people that approach um, us and say, like, I could never do it with you. It's a lie. And I'm not going to say, oh, thanks, Adam. No, it's a lie. I'm telling you, you, you could do this. If we can do this, you could do this. So it's, it has nothing to do with your talents, your abilities, your things that you are capable of. You become capable of what you need to become capable of. Uh, you go to the next picture. Um, so this is an old picture, and this is where I'm going to start transitioning a bit. Um, this is in North Myrtle Beach. This this kind of marks a change in an era for me, because before this, I've been a believer for about I don't know a year, year and a half. Uh, before this, uh, my understanding of Christianity was that somehow. By the, by the grace of God, he made a way for me to enter heaven, and I was very grateful. And that was, that was the beginning and the end of it. This began a, a change in me where I really started to understand the fullness of the gospel, which is what I want to talk about tonight. The fullness of the gospel. That is, it's a completed, total work. Um, and this was the beginning of a time for me when I went from just a saved guy, you know, like, hey, all right, Christian. To someone that actually believed in the power of the gospel to transform lives, including my own, and believed in the, in the, the, the uh, ability of God to use us. Um, if you have Bibles, you can go to Isaiah 61. Um, this is one of my favorite uh, parts in all scripture. It reads, um, starting in verse 1, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to all who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance for our God, and to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. So this is actually a, the first real reveal, the first revelation of the gospel. You know, a, a, as important a, as, as it is that, that Jesus has given us a destination, that God has made a way to heaven, to, to eternity, the reality of the gospel is that the, the question is a lot less about if you were to die today, where would you go? And more about if you happen to live through the night, who are you going to be? And who are you going to follow? Because we all follow somebody. And in fact, when, when Jesus gave a tough sermon, uh, there's a big crowd, and they all start to leave, and he turns to his disciples. You remember this? And he's like, aren't you going to go too? Early in his ministry. Their question is, well, who would we follow? Because they understood. We follow somebody. We follow something. And there's messages all around us. I've, I've been in this school. I've heard the messages. We're all valued by something. 
there's always something we're clinging to, running after. It's academics. It, you know, we're, we're being evaluated on our successes. We're being, uh, you know, just pressured towards something. What message? What makes you valuable is a great question. Because, because the messages we get, the way you look, the way you act, what you achieve, what you own, all these things are messages that come to us constantly. Do you follow those messages, or is there a different one? Is there, is there a message that says, this is the year of the Lord's favor? Because when you look at that scripture, in light of, of all the messages thrown our way, you start to realize that being broken hearted isn't the end. It doesn't define you, it doesn't become who you are, because you'll be bound up. You start to realize that when we're captive, we have anything from, from physical captivity, which we find all around the world, to to mental captivity, to addictions, these things, that they don't define us, they don't take away value because there is freedom, there's liberty there. We go through all these things, you know, we've got, we've got mourning, we've got gladness, we've got all of these things that the world tells us, these, these things create an identity for you. So we have to ask ourselves, if I live through the night, who am I going to be? Uh, for me, for a long time, I, I hated that answer because I, I really, really didn't like myself. Um, uh, growing up the way I did, um, there was immense pressure. We talked about being in Redefine, being in the band. My life was music. Everything was music. I was performing since I was young. Um, I was on stages all the time. And you get on a stage and you get in front of people like this, you know. And it comes down to what can I do to impress you? Because if I get done and I walk off that, down those steps and around this corner, and you don't clap, that changes my value, that changes my personality, that changes everything about me. And if that happens, and I need to do something and work harder to make sure that next time I get up here, I can impress you, I can do something. And then, of course, my, my parents are teachers, and so then the academic things came in, and of course, the only, actually, the only school I applied to was UW-Madison. Because I, I was so focused on, on this, this is, this is my school, this is, this is my legacy, this is where I'm from, that if I couldn't get into Madison, I was, my life was over, I was done. There's no point in me 